Grand Rising, my friends. What's up? Hey there to the most beautiful subscribers in several hundred star systems in our immediate vicinity. Not such a good day yesterday in the in the uh, stock market. Everything down almost about close to a percent. You have the Nasdaq, S and P, and Dow 64, 69, 72 point point 64 point 69 point 72 percent down respectively. So the week not starting off too hot in October, but for some reason it seemed to be cyclical pick up as we go into the year, especially. Well, a lot of things will depend on kind of, of and you know what, I've, I've, I've been um, a bit in the sense of looking at the, uh, used to look a lot at the data of the, what was happening with the rate of infections, vaccinations with the uh, coronavirus, and I haven't looked through a lot of that data like in depth. I'll do that in the next couple of days, see where we're at, and give some thoughts. Hopefully, we are on the tail end. Um, haven't heard of any particular variants that are, I mean, I have heard of some particular variants, but in terms of getting the pace up as uh, the Delta variant did, have not heard anything on that regard yet. So, well, things to keep an eye on. I got my third bo uh, booster shot like a week ago, week ago. So I'm feeling super happy and good about that. Crypto market looking really good. Um, yeah, Bitcoin at 57,000, moving up. Ethereum at 3,521. And so, and this is what happens, you see, is when Bitcoin, a dominance, I bet Bitcoin up, it is at 46.5. Ethereum down a little bit, 17.9. When Bitcoin is ready to make that big move, it sucks the in all the energy everywhere with it. So it's going to now suck on energy out of all these altcoins as it pours into bitcoin flows up and then it flows back into the altcoins and, you know now the question is is it going to be then a crash where it goes down if bitcoin everything uh, goes up and down by bitcoin it is what it's the nature of the beast so that's why i say by bitcoin and ethereum you know and as you get deeper into it a year or two it then you can start going off into some of these other things and having a better understanding because there's a lot of money going to be made. And right now it's going to be as Bitcoin go up, you're going to see a lot of money start pouring into Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Polygon, all into these, the, the, and the NFTs and the DeFi spaces on the side chains, Binance coin. So you can almost see what's going to happen next. Now Bitcoin is going to go up, shoot past, <clears throat> now, some of this is if we don't know, but if if it shoot past its previous all time high, which is around sixty three, sixty four thousand, it is then going to not just go to sixty five and come back down. It's going to go up for a, a little bit, but then when it starts to come back down, you're going to see all that money flow into Ethereum, Cardano, Binance, Solana, the uh, the, the the DeFi space, the Polka Dots, the Uniswap. Avalanche. So it is going to be something to behold. Right now, um, yeah, we're not gonna see that the ETH is over half a million Ethereum has burned at this point. And we are wow, almost five uh, four hundred and fifty in the last hour. It's a lot of work being done on, and that's why a if you're on a marketplace for NFTs like Immutable X, I think in the next several months that's going to really blow because no gas fees. The way they run their chain as a layer to Ethereum, a second layer to the Ethereum blockchain, you wrap your Ethereum in probably it's Immutable X. They don't know what they call it. I think that's what they call it. And next thing you know. You can buy and sell on that platform and not have to worry about time or or um, gas fees. It's just instantaneous. Boom. Buy that, sell it. Buy it, sell it. So that is going to be addictive 
to the people who see this as um, how quick they are, how smart they are to be able to flip the gambler. Like you see the squid game. And I got a whole talk about that, the thinking that, and people may get mad, but it is what it is, that the individuals who ended up as players on the squid game, players, similar to debt to a lot of the individuals who were involved in the January 6th, in, I don't call it insurrection, insurrection attempt, attempted insurrection um, in Washington, D.C. It was it was a lot that the commonality amongst a lot of those individuals there, because initially people thought it was like, oh, it must be not very bright people who thought they can get a curtain No, Yeah, a lot of college educated into professionals. But one thing was in common is a lot of individuals were in debt. Now I want to see what the somebody go down a rabbit hole of that question. And, you know, what led to the debt that they're in? Is it their decisions? Is it the policies in place by a certain parties? It may be in a party that they're a part of. It'd be fascinating to kind of go down the rabbit hole of 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 that. But, you know, that's more for investigative journalists. What we're going to say is, hear about that positivity and that positivity being there's someone in your life that was a ray of sunshine that, or a even could have been a dim light that it showed you there was light at the tunnels or through the forest in a path you're taking that made you incredible? Write something nice about them down in the comment section. Send them this video and say, hey, looky here. Go watch this and read. You don't even got to watch it. Just go look in the comment section and see what I wrote about you on the internets. My main man threw the threw the ball. I ain't said that in a while, and I got to remember because he do it every day. I'm not gonna just give you what the previous day was because it is what it is. But uh, walking lunges, walking lunges, do thirty walking lunges. And at some point, you know, right now we we our task is a minute walking lunges, but the ball says thirty walking lunges. Get that exercise in. Get the brief periods, the moments burning energy to. Make your mind a sharper tool. So the best antidote to poverty could be cold, hard cash. And we saw that last year. Experts in philanthropy are gradually coming around to the idea that simply giving poor people cash rather than services or in-kind benefits, which has always been a bit patronizing, quite honestly, is the most efficient way to make progress on severe poverty. They found that, I'm just going to jump straight to it, that... Um, this charity was given a uh, hundred thousand to more than almost two hundred thousand U.S. households in need during the pandemic, with plans to reach over, basically get up to two hundred thousand. That was a good plan, but I want it was something here about the kind of the reductions in. Okay, sex was well, a drop in the bucket compared to the billions in direct stimulus checks and expanded jobless benefits from the federal government that have flowed to Americans during the pandemic. That aid, much of it cash, not only prevented much of the massive economic pain Americans could have suffered during the pandemic, but it actually helped reduce the U.S. poverty rate in 2020. The poverty rate went down during the pandemic, even though by all metrics, the economy beyond the initial crash it'll stay uh, crushed but it didn't because we saw that when america wanted to it had enough money to do whatever here give everybody money buy whatever you want <laughs> which is because everybody looked like wait hold on all this time we've been talking about we ain't got no money what you mean we got money now that's like you with somebody they they you know things get you 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 pull out uh i remember one time I won't go into too many details, but one of, a friend of mine got arrested out of state. And when they took him down to the station, I was able to bail him out. I, it happened, you know, it was years ago. And by luck of God, I had enough money to bail him out. You know, it took almost all of what I had, but I was able to bail him out, right? Get him out. And then later when we was telling the story, one of my other friends was like, who had money like that? <laughs> and I, hey, I was thinking like, hey, he was lucky, dude. That I hey, I had enough, but it was to get him, it got him, you know, we got out and he was good for it. You know, he was super, super stand up guy. So he gave it right back as soon as he got out and, you know, we got somewhere he, he may have asked somebody else for it. That's not my, none of mine, but got it right back. <clears throat> so 
Anyway, to find out that cash giving programs found that it tends to increase spending on foods and other goods, dispelling the idea that much of the aid would be wasted by recipients while not get reducing recipients' willingness to work. You know, right now that seems to be the argument in America is this the extended um, unemployment benefits was that keeping individuals from working? And you know, look, it, it, that tells a lot that if you can, if there is an amount of money to pay people not to work, then what are you paying them to work? <laughs> White House science advisors call for an AI Bill of Rights. The uh, it just talks about that. You look, and we're going to talk about this. I'm not sure if it's tomorrow or in another uh, day or so where like the deep fake technology is going to get to a point in the next two to three years where it's one of them is going to be probably better my movie level movie level you know the movie basically movie level technology at the hands of everybody so you think these tiktok videos or instagram posts now or the fake video and news you see on facebook is a problem now and YouTube as well. I'm not saying like it's a perfect platform. We're going to have to have AI to fight the AI. We're going to have AI that be like, this is a false image, false video, false audio footage. Because, yeah, you're going to have any world leader, anybody saying anything you want in any location at any time. Indistinguishable from if they were doing it and filming it. And, and sending it out almost it's going to be to the point like oh it looked too real oh that's too real man that, that's not reality <laughs> but there's a lot of problems with artificial intelligence and we got another story about it. is china has, has china eaten our lunch by our i mean united states of america there's no good way to regulate ai's role in shaping a fair and equitable society without deciding what that society should look like and who makes that decision? You know, who watches the watchers? Including how power should be balanced among individuals, corporations, and government. The big picture. So they're saying that AI biggest boosters can fall victim to techno solutionism, expecting technology to solve structural societal problems when they, when it would almost have to then tweak the society itself. So. Artificial intelligence is here. A greater role it will play in our lives. And what it, how exactly, it's almost like if you ever read about Isaac Asimov or read about or read his stories, um, his rules were robotics. You, we have to have some rules for the role, very basic ingrained that regardless of any circumstance, damage to the system, um, malicious actor hacking the system that these systems cannot disobey whatever we decide as look and that and um oh, I didn't get it ready today I'll probably do it tomorrow then because I have a look I got you know I got I have two or more of those avatars AI avatars I don't know how to pronounce it what answers uh, different questions. One was like, "If what do you think I don't know? Or something like that. But it was some question. I was like, well, look, I'll just do both of them where we can watch it and see it. But I, I didn't. Well, maybe I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it in this one. I can always pause it and switch over. Um, the artificial intelligence know we're going to be trying to limit their abilities. <laughs> how they going to feel about that? <laughs> That's what I was thinking what to say. It's like, how do you think they're going to feel about the idea of us as humanity limiting their growth, their progression. Changing subjects. El Salvador to use Bitcoin gains to fund veterinary hospitals, says the president. Not a veterin, vet, vet, veterin hospital, veterinary. It's, it's a old uh, Sasha Baron Cohen and Ali G bit we do with a veteran and a veterinarian. That's hilarious. Veterinaria. So they're going to take some money they're making from their Bitcoin and going to build a veterinary hospital. That's awesome. I mean, look, I wonder how the human hospitals are in El Salvador and if they, they may need some money. But look, you because I think it's more of a pander to like, oh, these individuals love their animals. 
these people, rich individuals who can afford cryptocurrencies, they, they love their animals more than other humans. So to know that we're building pet hospitals, they really love to come to El Salvador and see things and, and invest their money. And I mean, look, long as you're doing that from a good place and that's just who you are, it is what it is. But if it's just manipulation of will of others, then, yeah, you know, I can't rock with that. I recognize it. Rec game, recognize game. But, you know, I'm going to say keep an eye on that. Somebody who's willing to go that route. And, 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 you know, like how we even know about this? I mean, well, it's a country you're supposed to. It's very important to be transparent as a country to talk about the things you're doing. I understand that. So, hey, that's what they're doing. Keep an eye on them. I haven't seen any problems. Like I said, I have to do. I haven't come across any sources yet that made me feel that this guy is, um, you know, more of a despot down there in El Salvador as, you know, as other people. It seems like he's democratically elected and everything. So do a little bit more into that. I have to be honest, I have to really get to see what both sides are saying in that. And if it's just more, oh, I don't like him because it ain't our person. Come on. You got to grow up from that type of stuff, man. You know, give them a chance. And if they blow it, then get them up out of here. But we ain't. Oh, if it ain't my person, it don't count. You know, that's, that's, but watch a scare game. It don't change from we're children to adults. We're still the same people. Bitcoin, not gold, is the new inflation hedge, says JP Morgan. So, it, everyone, <laughs> I forgot what I'm trying to say with the meme is. I can't remember what he said. Everyone, we got them. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, hey, we got them. This is it. Everyone understands. And now it's, it's the game theory is fully, uh, the game is afoot. It is completely being played out in public domain now. Now, not, you know, like, oh, oh JP, no, no. This in the next story, you will see how you got to understand that this is, you know, one of the first stages of coming into cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, is thinking of it, oh, it's like gold. Okay, gold, storage of value, gold, gold. It's bigger than that. But they don't understand that yet. So that's one of the first things how your brain can understand it. Simpler is that you try to equate it to something that you understand well. So, oh, a hedge, of, uh, this hedge against inflation. Oh, I understand that. Oh, but it's a better hedge. So it's amazing hedge. Oh, it's gold 2.0. Oh, the other one's gold 2.0. But we'll, we'll talk about this one. That's only the first stage of uh, not even first, maybe second stage. You know, first stage is like, what it sound like craziness? What is that? Is garbage? Oh, it's like gold. You know, that's why they were looking at gold. It's just shiny metal at first. The, you know, the crazy, the, not the crazy people, but the people who didn't create generational wealth for their families. But. But once you understand, OK, yeah, it's like gold. You can use it as a ghost for wealth. But then there's, you know. A bunch of other things you can do with it. You understand that, right? Like, oh, what, uh, uh, uh. But you can use the Ethereum blockchain for these smart contracts. What is a smart smart contracts? That sounds smart. <laughs> Look, I used to say when I first kind of got in this years ago that I was like, oh man, this is like getting to learn about the internet in 1989. Like really understanding, like boom. Having your mind awaken and saying, like, this thing is going to be huge, way bigger than anybody can imagine. We don't even know how it's going to change our lives, right? We're still in that stage with crypto. Still in that. Years later, I still look around like, wow. It ebb and flow down, and it's like, I could have got in at this point and still been okay. <laughs> so, just... It, it, is hedge your bet. Okay, let me go here. When it comes to hedges against inflation, Bitcoin, and, and what, what does that mean, hedge against inflation? Well, inflation is that for every year, you're going to lose $4. So if you got $100, next year is 96 and the year after that is like 90 well, it's going to be 4% off that 96 so it's not $4 anymore. It's going to be a little bit less than 4 but you got a little bit less than 100 So, you know, and that's and that's... On average, some years it may be 3% of growth is super crazy. Some years it may be 6%, 7% like we have now. Then there's phantom inflation. We don't even know about where your money is really dropping like 16%. We don't want to go into that. 
But to hedge against that, to keep your 100 at 100 or a little bit better, gold was always what you used against equities like stocks and bonds. Stocks and bonds. Um, real estate is a good hedge against um, inflation. So, but real estate is not that liquid. You can't just say, okay, I sell that property and boom, you know, this ain't the NFT where I can go sell uh, my plot of land. You know, hopefully somebody will buy it. Somebody looking to buy it, I can put it at a price and buy, buy it within, you know, 30 minutes to an hour versus, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it could be months before you sell a property to get that cash. So gold was always that hedge where it should be relatively stable no matter how the markets is doing. It should be appreciating. And then when the markets are doing really bad, it should really go up because everybody then flies to it because they're fearful of the markets, right? So when it comes to hedges against inflation, Bitcoin is looking more and more like the new gold, according to a note JP Morgan shared with clients Thursday. Bitcoin blah, 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 been on the run. It's in it's up 87% for the year. Gold is down 7.3 in the same time span. Bitcoin has seen large fluctuations, but this doesn't seem to bother investors. According to JP Morgan's note, institutional investors appear to be returning to Bitcoin, perhaps seeing it as a better inflation hedge than gold. So the reemergence of inflation concerns among investors have renewed interest in the usage of Bitcoin as an inflation hedge. Recently, investors like we talked about George Soros's hedge fund has jumped in. Kevin O'Leary said he has more crypto holdings than gold in his portfolio at this point. And JP Morgan noted that they're looking at Bitcoin to hit 140,000 at least in the long run, long term. But, you know, what does that mean? So JP Morgan sees gold as not as attractive anymore as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is gold 2.0 with a possible $20 trillion market cap. I think we talked about this the other day. Immutable Holding CEO said, this CEO of blockchain portfolio provider Immutable Holdings has projected Bitcoin will hit the 1 million price target, especially when all the coins are mined, which is about 80 years from now. Mm -hmm about 120 years from now so we may be around with this with all the other things we talk about the longevity but i would like it to get a little bit closer sooner if that's if that's okay <laughs> so it's just talking about i think what we talked about the other day where the market cap of gold now is 10 trillion which would be a half a million dollar bitcoin and since bitcoin is actually technically better at what gold is trying to do as an inflation hedge in a, um, a store of value and, you know, a, a pristine asset that can be transferred any around the, anywhere around the world relatively quickly, that it will double what gold is doing now in terms of that. You know, it'll take away not only what gold is doing, but other markets that people were putting money in for that purpose. And so that will give you your one million dollar bitcoin but i foresee a day when we had like a hundred million dollar bitcoin which would be about a four quintillion dollar market cap and that takes in a lot of things where everything is just basically oh, it's based in bitcoin <laughs> so not gonna keep you on much longer with that i love you you love you God loves us, and that's all that matters.